The problem from this video can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link and you can download a copy of this and all of my problems for yourself. Now, if you check the website and you click on videos, you'll see there are more videos than those I've listed publicly on YouTube. You can see that there's uh, every problem covered in the workbook has either a public video or a members only video. If you'd like access to the members only video, just click the join button beneath the video player on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine problem 93A. This is our first problem about a bond and bonds are difficult and technical to deal with. So actually, before I jump into the problem, I just want to explain what bonds are and kind of how they work. And then we'll come back to the bond problem. If you feel like, no, I know what a bond is, just skip ahead. I'll put the amount of time you need to skip ahead up here. Uh, and for the rest of us, let's just discuss what are bonds. So a bond, and particularly when you're looking at it from the perspective of an intro accounting class, a bond is a company borrowing money and it's the company getting a note payable. So they get cash and they write a piece of paper saying, I promise to pay you back with money. Uh, now this is big company accounting. And so typically, and, and even big governments uh, issue bonds as well, and city governments issue bonds. Uh, typically what they're doing is they're saying, I want to borrow money. Uh, the banks aren't giving me a rate or features that I like. So I just want to have investors buy my bonds. I want to borrow money from just people. And so let's say I want to borrow $10 million. It's hard to find somebody outside of a bank to lend $10 million. But what I could do is I could find hundreds of people or even thousands of people willing to lend me $1,000, right? And just a lot of little notes payable. And so what a bond is, it's just a package of notes payable. Now, what sort of distinguishes a bond? They're typically quite long term in nature. And in fact, they can be very, very long term in nature. And I just want to discuss one bond. And it's going to help us kind of illustrate what we're talking about when we talk about bonds. So I just Googled this MIT century bond is what it's uh, called. If you Google it, you'll get the same story. There's a link there to the story. It says MIT sells $500 million in taxable century bonds. And uh, let's just read this first paragraph. Earlier today, well, this was 2016, but earlier today, MIT sold $500 million of Series E taxable bonds maturing in 2116 and yielding 3.885%. So MIT wanted to borrow, that's a lot of money, $500 million. And presumably they looked at all of their options and, uh, you know, maybe went to banks and banks don't want to lend. And, and look at the maturity date, 2116. So what does that mean? Well, MIT is going to borrow $500 million today and they're going to pay it back in 2116. Now, I don't know about you, but I guess just about everybody watching this video is going to be dead in 2116. I'm not going to be dead because I'm going to uh, have my brain frozen in some vat of liquid nitrogen and I'll, I'm going to outlive uh, everybody watching this video. But most of you guys are going to be dead in 2116. So let's think about this proposition. MIT says, hey, we want to borrow $500 million. We're going to slice it up into $1,000 slices. So you invest $1,000 in MIT. And in 2116, you get your $1,000 back plus interest. Well, that wouldn't make any sense because, of course, you are long since dead uh, before you can collect on that money. And uh, that's a problem. So here's why this type of bond exists. And here's why people actually buy these bonds. They're not actually interested in the money coming back in 2116. That's a small part of it. What you're interested in is this number. And MIT says, okay, I'm going to pay you, let's just round this up, 4% interest just for the purpose of our conversation. So if you invest, let's say you're a retiree and you've got a million bucks, okay? Uh, you've got a million dollars ready to retire, a million dollars. And you say, I'm going to buy these MIT bonds. So MIT pays 4%. That's $40,000 per year. Uh, now, this is actually a pretty stable way to have a retirement. If MIT exists as a university, 
they will pay you back. And so you could say, okay, I put away a million dollars. I'm going to get $40,000 a year for the rest of my life until the day I die. And then, you know, my offspring, my kids are going to have this $40,000 annuity. Uh, every year they'll get $40,000. And in fact, bonds don't pay interest every year. They pay interest every six months. So we divide that by two and we would say $20,000 each six months. So the people who like to buy bonds are typically old people, right? And MIT bonds are attractive because people trust that MIT is going to be around to pay them back. Bonds get rated based on quality. Now, MIT would be the highest rating of bond, AAA, meaning investors are very confident MIT is going to be able to pay them back. Uh, countries like Canada is AAA rated and various other borrowing entities, you know, will be rated AAA, AA, single A, triple B, double B, single B. And I think it even goes down to like C and D, but you really don't need to worry when you get down that low. This is based on risk. So as you go higher, your risk gets lower. So in other words, this is risky. This one is safe and it's sort of a, a spectrum. So what an investor would do is they'd look at these MIT bonds and they would say to themselves, okay, let's just say I want to invest my million dollars that I've got set aside for my retirement. And there's a market for these bonds. I can buy MIT bonds that pay 4%. Well, let's say at the same time, so MIT is super safe. Let's say at the same time, Harvard has a bond that pays 5%. Same term, same everything else. Harvard has a bond that pays 5%. MIT has a bond that pays 4%. Well, in my view, Harvard is just as safe a bet as MIT is. Now, maybe some university expert will tell me why I'm wrong, but in my sort of uninformed view, I would think Harvard and MIT are basically identical in terms of their risk profile. I think they're both super solid institutions that aren't going out of business anytime soon. I would feel very comfortable to lend them money that they would pay me back. So in this circumstance, Harvard can give me 5%, MIT gives me 4%, if you're an investor, there ain't an investor in the world that wouldn't buy the Harvard bond over the MIT bond. You'd have to be a real MIT super fan to invest in MIT if you could get 5% from Harvard and a 5% guaranteed return from Harvard versus a 4% or very low risk return from Harvard versus 4% very low risk return from MIT. So as a consequence, Harvard bonds will issue at a premium. What does that mean? It means that Harvard bonds will sell for more. If I want to lend Harvard $1,000 or have Harvard pay me back $1,000 in 100 years or 20 years or whatever the timeline is, I actually have to lend them more than $1,000. So I pay more or lend more than they pay back. Uh, MIT on the other end, let's just say the market rate for these types of companies is like four and a half percent. So MIT is below the market rate. Harvard is above. MIT on the other hand would issue their bonds at a discount. In other words, you could pay less than a thousand dollars and lend them less than a thousand dollars and be paid back a thousand dollars at the end of the term. So this chapter is all about this scenario. Uh, accounting for this, accounting for the fact that companies borrow money, they borrow these complicated bonds, and when they borrow the money, they sometimes get more than they ask for. For example, if our interest rate is high, or they sometimes get less than they asked for if their interest rate is low. So that's what we're accounting for here, and that's what we're dealing with. And I think now would be a good time to jump back into the problem if I can find the problem. Where is the problem? There it is. Jeez, took me a while. Uh, okay, so let's now jump in to problem 93A. On February 1st, 2024, Tinger Inc. issues a $100,000 10-year 5% bond. Okay, so the bond rate, the rate we're promising to pay is 5%. And again, numbers are always annual. Bonds, though, pay interest every 
six months. So our rate is 2.5% every six months. That's 5% divided by two. The market rate of interest is 6%. Okay, so again, every six months, that's 3% semi-annually i guess i should say i keep saying every six months but the real word is semi-annual the semi-annual interest rate here is six percent so uh, immediately eyeballing this i'm offering five percent they can get six percent with other investments in the market guess what nobody's going to pay full price for my bond now when i say six percent for uh other investments in the market, I mean ones that are very similar to my company. So uh, with a similar risk profile to Tinger Inc., you can expect to get 6%. Tinger Inc. is only offering at 5%. Tinger Inc. is an unattractive uh, bond purchase and as a consequence is going to have to issue at a discount. It's going to have to take less than $1,000. If they, if they want to get $100,000, well, too bad. They either have to offer higher interest rate or take less money, and they're going to take less money here, and that's why this is a bond issued at a discount. Again, the uh, market rate of interest is higher than our rate. Nobody's going to want to buy our bond unless we sell it cheaper. Okay, uh, because the market rate is higher than the bond rate, the bond's issued at a discount. The bond quote is 92.561. When you see a bond quote like this, 92.561, just think percentage. So we got 92.561% of what we asked for. So well, actually, let's do the math here. We asked for $100,000. We got 92.561% of that. So we got $92,561. Okay, so we can actually do our first journal entry and why don't we do it? We'll do this table in a minute. Let's, let's solve B, journal entry I, the journal entry for the issuance of the bond. So again, we're looking at B, journal entry I. We issued this bond on February 1st, 2024. We asked for $100,000. We only got $92,000. So let's debit cash. $92,561. Let's credit bond payable. I'm going to leave room for another debit here. Bond payable. And at the end of this, after 10 years, I've got to pay back $100,000. Now, the difference here is the discount or the premium. And in this case, we got less than we asked for. We have a discount of $74.39. That is the discount on the bond payable. Okay, so we've done the first entry. Again, I owe $100,000. I only got $92,000 today, so I'm taking a discount of $74.39. A different way to think of the discount is I borrow 92, in 10 years I got to pay back 100. This discount represents almost like extra interest, right? I have to pay 74.39, I have to pay interest every six months, but I also have to pay 74.39 in extra money over the, you know, at the end of the life of the bond, that's extra interest. And so we'll, we'll deal with that discount as the question goes on. Okay, so that was, we did B part I. It says the bonds pay interest semi-annually on February 1st. I'm just looking here on February 1st and August 1st. Uh, the company's fiscal year ended September 30th. Prepare the bond amortization schedule. Okay, it's really a discount amortization schedule. So there's uh, the first column and you should have this in your accounting workbook. Um, semi-annual interest period is just the date. And so the, the first relevant date is Feb 1, 2024. Uh, then it's just our interest dates. So our first interest payment, uh, August 1st, 2024. And our second interest payment, Feb 1, 2025. We don't put a fiscal year end on here, even though that's a relevant date, it doesn't go on the chart. It's just bond issuance date, interest, interest, interest. Okay, our interest payment, blank percentage maturity value. This is our rate divided by two. 
So our rate was 5% divided by two, it's 2.5%. This is actually a lot easier to do in Excel, but I'll do it by hand because you might have to do it by hand. Interest expense, uh, market rate. Again, divided by two because it's all semi-annual on this chart. Uh, so it's 6% divided by two is 3%. Discount amortization or premium amortization. Well, it's a discount, not a premium. So I'll just scratch that out. Discount premium account balance. Again, it's discount account balance. And bond carrying out blank minus the discount blank plus the premium. And the blank here, you can see it's dollars, something missing minus D. The blank here is the face value of the bond. So in this case, the face value of our bond is 100,000. Okay, we're ready to go. So our interest payment, blank percent or two and a half percent of maturity value. Uh, so I take, well, actually, forgive me. Uh, we're doing February 1st on the issuance of the bond. So February 1st is the day Tinger Inc. sort of sells the bonds. They say, okay, give us money. We'll give you pieces of paper that say we promise to pay you back a hundred thousand dollars. You know, it's a hundred one thousand dollar notes payable to different lenders, right? Different investors. Um, so uh, Tinger does not make an interest payment on day one. They're just borrowing the money. So nothing happening there. There's no interest expense on day one, and there's no discount amortization on day one. These three cells are always blank. They will never be used. We do have a discount account balance on day one. What's our discount on day one? It's 74.39, just what we put in the journal entry. We do have a bond carrying amount, 100,000 minus, so it says 100,000 minus D, so 100,000 minus 74.39 is 92.561. Okay, let's move on to line two. Interest payment. 2.5% uh, of maturity value. Our maturity value is 100,000. That's the amount we got to pay back at the end of the bond. So two, oops, uh, let's do it this way. 100,000 times 0 0.025, $2,500. Interest expense, 3% of the preceding bond carrying amount, 3%. Now the preceding bond carrying amount is right here. 92,561, so I take 3% of that number. 0 0.03 times 92,561, 27,77. We're just gonna round to the dollar in this table. Again, on a spreadsheet, it would take to the, the penny or beyond, 27,77. Discount amortization, B minus A. So whatever you have in cell B, 2777, minus cell A, 2500, 2777 minus 2500 is 277. Uh, discount account balance, D minus C, so 7439 minus 277. Again, these two numbers, 7439 and 277. Let's do it. Seven four three nine minus two seven seven. Seventy one sixty two. And last a hundred thousand dollars minus D. A hundred thousand minus seventy one sixty two. And I get ninety two eight thirty eight. Okay, on to the next one. And once you've done this a couple times, it does get to be old hat. I recognize the first time you do this, it's really hard. After you've done it like three, four times, it actually gets boring. It gets easy. Um, but it's hard the first few times for sure. Okay, so let's do column A again for, for February 1st, 2025. Interest payment, blank percent of maturity value, two and a half percent of maturity value. Well, it's still two and a half percent. Our maturity value is always what we pay back at the end. It's always a hundred thousand, the face value. So two and a half percent of a hundred thousand is twenty five hundred. And if we did this table, you know, for the full ten years, it would be twenty five hundred every time. That's why old people like this investment. It is like steady eddy, right? It's the same every period in terms of a payment and companies like it too because they know they have some certainty around their debt it's not like variable rate debt interest expense 
Okay, the market rate is 3% and it says interest expense is 3% of the preceding bond carrying amount. So I'm going to take 0.03 times the preceding bond carrying amount, which this time is 92838, right? It's column E, the newest one, 92838. 2785. Discount amortization, 2785 minus $2,500 is uh, 285 discount account balance d minus c so 7162 minus 285 7162 minus 285 6877 i don't know why that's still highlighted let me unhighlight that and last now this is places people screw up they go 92 minus 6 like 92 minus 6,800. No, no, no. It's 100,000 minus 6,877. 100,000 minus 6,877 is 93,123. Okay. There we have it. We've completed part one or part A. We have completed our effective interest table. Uh, now we've got to do our journal entries and we've done journal entry I, we just have a couple more. So it says, do the journal entry for the first interest payment, August 1st, 2024. Well, hopefully this is not a surprise. We're going to use data from this line, right? The line marked August 1st, 2024. And by the way, what does this refer to? It's a six month period. It goes from February, March, April. May, June, July, not August, because we're on August 1st. It's these six months that are kind of wrapped up in this yellow highlighted line. So again, this is related. Um, okay, so what's our journal entry then? Uh, so it's August 1st, 2024. We make a payment, so credit cash, 2,500, that's the interest payment on that line. So cash is going out, 2,500. Now I'm gonna skip over to interest expense, 2,777. So interest expense should be a debit, no surprise there. 2,777. And discount amortization, 277. What we're doing is we're making our discount smaller by 277 so it was 7439 debit to make it smaller reduce it by 277 so we'll credit our discount now the idea here is and this is where again will hopefully help you to understand bonds uh, the idea here is this 7439 this number this discount number remember what's happening here we borrowed 92,561. We got to pay back $100,000. This 7,439 difference, this is like extra interest, right? I borrow this amount. I got to pay back that amount, which is higher. That's interest. Like no doubt about it. That's interest. But it's interest that happens over 10 years because this is a 10-year bond. And so what we're saying is a little bit of a, at a time, we're going to recognize that interest. So here, we're recognizing, so I pay back 2,500 in interest. That's an interest payment, $2,500. And so of course there's $2,500 in interest expense here, right? Like 2,500 of this relates to this cash payment. The other 277, we're saying, oh, that extra seven grand in money I didn't get at the start of the uh, bond, I gotta recognize that interest expense over the 10 year life of the bond. So I'm gonna recognize 277 extra dollars of interest right now related to that discount and so that's what that's what this table is all about that's what this problem is all about so hopefully that's a little bit helpful if you don't understand the concept behind it at least hopefully the mechanics aren't too bad because mechanically this is it's pretty straightforward okay let's continue on to our next entry so I'll unhighlight this and i'll actually even take away that comment there our next relevant entry is the company's fiscal year end, September 30th, 2024. So we're actually gonna pull data from this line. Now this line carries us from August 1st, so August, September, October, November, 
December and January, not February because it's February 1st, and that again is six months. Now we're interested in up to September 30th. So we're interested in the months of August and September. We're interested in two months. So what we're gonna do is take information from that highlighted line and multiply by two sixths. We're interested in two sixths of that data. So let's do it. We'll start with our interest expense, 2785. Well, it's not 2785 because it's only two months. So 2785 times two sixths. And again, that's August 1st to September 30th is two months apart. Right, it's two months later, not 20 months, two months later. So that's why two out of six months on the uh, table. Uh, so our interest expense is going to be 2785, just the number from that column, times two sixths. 928. Uh, our discount amortization, 285, again, times two sixths. And it's 95. So we credit our discount because we want to reduce it by 95. And the last thing is cash, but I don't pay cash here, right? There's $2,500 in cash, but let's take that 2,500 times two sixths. And I get 833. And sure enough, this works. If you add 833 and 95, you get 928. So the thing balances, but since I'm not paying cash, this is a payable, it's a liability. It's, it's building up the interest that I owe. This is interest that will be paid, but right now it's payable. So we have unpaid amount that we're, is building that hasn't been paid, that's interest payable. Okay, on to part four. And this is on uh, February 1st. And you can see here the second interest payment, February 1st. Uh, so we're going to use data from this line, but we've kind of already dealt with the first two months. Now we're going to deal with the four months following, because again, from August for, or from September 30th to February 1st, 2025 is October, November, December, January. Don't count February because it's February 1st, four months later and sure enough it's it's those four months october november december january it's going to be four sixths of things on the line so our interest expense 2785 well times four sixths so let's start there 2785 times four sixths times four divided by six 1857 we're gonna credit our discount. And the discount again will be the discount amortization times four six, so 285 times four six. 190. Uh, we're gonna credit, now this interest payment, do I pay four six of the interest on February 1st? The answer is no, I gotta pay the full 2,500 every six months. I pay 2,500, so credit cash, 2,500 here. And I got a journal entry that doesn't balance, 2,500 plus 190, 2,690 in credits minus 1,857 in debits. I'm missing a debit here of 833, is that number ringing any bells? And it should be. My interest payable was 833 and guess what? I just paid $2,500 in interest. I don't have any interest payable, I've paid it off. So we debit interest payable for the amount of 833. And there we have it. We've solved this very difficult problem, problem 93A bonds issued at a discount, we've prepared our effective interest table, and we've done the appropriate
journal entries. I hope this video was helpful in helping you, helpful in helping you better understand bonds. It's been about 30 minutes. If you made it to the end of the video, I hope it's worth a little click on that old thumbs up button. Thanks uh, for your support and uh, have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.